Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Dark Web Honestly, it gets its fair share of criticism. But do you know what? For all those bad words, for all the uneducated opinions, or even for all the downright peculiar claims that are thrown around so flippantly, there is something else. Something much more than those two words conjure. Something which seems to stick, and if I had to choose one word to describe it, well, that word would be intrigue. Don't get me wrong, I do understand it. Over time, the dark web has become a thing of mystery, or legend even. But realistically, when you break it down to the bare bones, down to its technicalities, the reality is anything but fantastical. Trust me, I know. I have been browsing the dark web for years, a decade even. And yes, I have seen the hideous underbelly. But it is not as widespread as the clickbait articles would have have you believe. Most of it is just people like you, people like me, normal people. Just looking, searching, yearning for an unregulated space to just connect. Like-minded individuals technically driven to create a technical world just below the one that you all know. A world where we can finally fit in. A world where we can be ourselves. Where we can share. But most importantly, where we can exist. That is all that is. A club. A secret club. One for outsiders and like most secret clubs. The actualities are rarely as appealing as the rumors that surround them. Well, that was all that it was. Right up until that night, the night that my world, that my little space, changed forever. It was the weekend and finally, after two long and arduous weeks at work, I had a little time off. I was set, I had a few drinks by my side, and I was riding the buzz of my second beer. And I was prepared to just chill and fall down a rabbit hole or two. And it was there, in my naive state, that after a few hours of aimlessly browsing, that suddenly, I found it. Mr. Mannequin Knowing what I know now, the words did little to explain the intent of their meaning. The page was nothing but those two words, and when I hovered over them, my cursor changed to show a link. Smiling, I took a sip of my drink, allowing the curiosity to fill me, and then, after a few seconds, I entered the site. Straight away, text began to scroll slowly from the top of my screen. Good evening, my wary traveler. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Mr. Mannequin. And I thank you profusely for all your patience. This welcome may come as a surprise. This welcome may come as a hindrance. This welcome may be unwelcoming. But this welcome precedes your disappearance. So if you decide to continue your journey, then please, continue with an understanding. Please review the terms and conditions, and pay attention, because they are quite demanding. It was then, in almost a flash, several paragraphs of words materialized on the screen, and before I even had a chance to understand what had happened, they had abruptly disappeared. And then again, the text began to scroll. Perfect! Superb! If you agree, then there is a little more that you must do. Tremendous! Huzzah! If you have decided that this is your home, then with a pleasure, I welcome you. The scrolling text buzzed into nothing, and shortly after, the word enter slowly bled onto my screen. It took a few seconds for my brain to understand what had just happened. After all, 
A lot had just occurred in such a small space of time. I took another sip of my beer as another smile spread across my lips. This is perfect. It only took a moment for me to click the button. A moment, a single moment, that I would regret forever. I knew that I had made a mistake the second that the next page loaded. One by one, the picture slowly buffered onto my screen and one by one, the horror of their nature began to slowly sink in. They were mannequins. One, two, four, and then six. Six quickly became twelve and twelve eventually became twenty-four. Mannequins, all of them, and stretched unnaturally across the entirety of their heads, almost to the point of tearing, was human skin. But it was more than just skin. They were faces. Their expressions were contorted, locked within the agony of their final moments. There were no teeth. There were no eyes. Only the outer layer of what they once were. Almost in a perfect line down either side. Metal staples jutted out from their cheeks, holding their individuality within the forever present of their demise. I try to move. I try to click off from the site to turn off the computer, the monitor, anything. But I could not look away. The pictures burned their way into my mind and I knew that in that moment, no matter what came next, no matter where my years would take me, no matter the turns in the path of my life or however the journey would end, that the pictures, that the horror, it would never leave me. I tried to move my arms, but they held firm, refusing to budge. And then, the text began to scroll once again. Thank you for stopping by. I understand that art can be a subjective matter. I hope you see that I appreciate true art, and that I relish it with a healthy dose of blood splatter. Mr. Mannequin will be seeing you soon. Mr. Mannequin will find you wherever. Thank you for visiting Mr. Mannequin's gallery. And as per the terms and conditions, your visit costs your only forever. That was two days ago, and I have not slept since. I have contemplated going to the police, and I have contemplated telling someone, anyone, but what would I tell them? A crazy man is making dolls out of people's skin? I found him on the dark web? He half threatened to turn me into a doll, or better yet, his name is Mr. Mannequin. No, I must figure this out by myself. I know that nobody would believe me. After all, I barely believe me. All that I know is something is coming, and whatever it is, no matter what happens, no matter how the story ends, no matter what comes next, whatever it is, I wish that I had left well alone. Time. I used to think that I knew what that concept meant. I mean, it is quite self-explanatory, right? Time is merely a construct to measure an observable change. I mean, you leave an apple outside and watch it over the course of a week, it's going to rot, right? But try imagining that process without time. How do you measure its decay? How do you measure the alteration of its form? What is change without time? It's comforting, or at least it was. To know that everything made sense, that there is a beginning, a middle, and most importantly, an end to everything. But say for just one moment that it was not an apple that you were seeing, but your life instead. And then, in addition to this, imagine that the concept of time had become broken. How could you ever make sense of such a thing? What would life be like if time did not exist? I have been asking myself that very question since yesterday. It happened across the space of 15 years to be exact. 
but it only actually lasted for a matter of minutes. I was 17 back then, and I had just heard of the dark web. And like most, I had heard the stories and like a few, I had decided to explore them myself. I had downloaded Tor and before I knew it, I was on. I browsed, I searched, I wandered. Thinking back to that day now, I honestly cannot say exactly what I had done online. I can only really recall where I ended up. It was a chat room, and considering the stories that preceded the dark web, a rather mundane one at that. I connected with my usual username, Cloverfield1337. I found people discussing the plot points of the most recently released blockbuster, while others spoke about coding. Some were engaging in the age-old act of harmless flirtation, while the vast majority seemed to just be insulting and arguing amongst themselves. On the surface, there was little to differentiate it from a chat room on the standard web. It was so incredibly normal. It was, right up until the point that DM came through. The username was generic, user2453. But the message I received was anything but. David? Straight away, the stranger approached me with my own name. Who is this? I was shaken. I mean, I had heard the stories of what could happen on the dark web, but I never genuinely believed it. My thoughts swirled as I awaited a response, and quickly one came. The window to the left. Wait for the bang. And before I could understand the meaning of the message, it came. Outside, a passing car clipped a parked one, causing the abrasive noise of metal on metal to fill the relative peace and quiet. In seconds, another message came. Tomorrow. By itself, it meant nothing. But with his quick departure following the message, looking back now in hindsight, it meant everything. I can now see how important that moment was. I was so afraid, I barely slept and most importantly, I overslept the next morning and missed the planned ride with my mother and father in town. I missed my last chance to say goodbye and I missed the final opportunity to tell them that I love them. The impact killed them instantly, but for me, the impact lasted a lifetime. I became obsessed with the elusive stranger. How did he know? How did he predict the car clipping the other outside my home and his lingering word, tomorrow? Did he predict my parents' death? For years, I could not let it go. I searched the dark web. I entered every chat room that I could find, desperately searching for his username. But with each passing year, I only found disappointment. One turned to two and two turned to ten and before I knew it, fifteen years had passed without an answer. That was until last night. And just like always, I try to enter a random chat room, only to be informed that my username, Cloverfield1337, was already in use. Annoyed, I click the button to randomly generate a new one, and I quickly connected. And as soon as I was in, I found myself scrolling through the user list, and within moments, I had found my imposter. As I clicked to open a DM, a strange sensation began to course throughout my body. It was strange, like deja vu wrapped within a blanket of a memory. And before I could even comprehend the feeling, I was already typing. David? It took a few seconds, but when the response came, my heart sank. Who is this? This was not possible. How could this be happening? A million thoughts filled my mind, but one was louder than the rest. It called to me. It screamed, and it demanded action. 
It came quick and it came strong and it would not relent. You can change it. I knew that I had to catch his attention, and almost from nowhere, the memory came. Without thinking, I began to type. The window to the left, wait for the bang. As I waited for a response, I felt as if my heart was forcing its way out against my chest as a palpable anxiety began to build. My thoughts turned nasty and threatening as somehow, I just knew that I was running out of time. I knew that I had to warn him. Tomorrow. As I placed the final letter on the screen and hit enter, I was instantly kicked from the room. And there, on the screen, in black against white, even though I did not understand it, I knew what I had done. Time should merely be a construct to measure an observable change. You leave an apple outside and watch it rot, but try to imagine the process without time. What is change without time? It's comforting, or at least it was. To know that everything made sense, that there was a beginning, a middle, and most importantly, an end to everything. And it was in that moment, as I read the randomly generated username that I had used to log into that chat room, I knew that the ending made little sense. User 24, 53. After all, I was the beginning, the middle, and the end. It was the summer of my junior year when the events of this story took place. My brother and I were chilling at home, playing Super Smash Bros. Brawl, when we heard a knock on our door. I answered it to see that our older brother was standing at our doorstep. Ted! I cried out. Nice to see you, Brad. Is Harry here? Yeah, he and I are just playing some brawl. Care to join us? And Ted responded with a, Hell yeah. Then he stepped inside. And while playing with him was fun, his faster reflexes and greater experience with the game meant that he would beat us 8 out of 10 times, even when we tried to team up on him. So we soon switched to other games, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness and Metroid Prime. But we soon grew bored, and I figured that we could pass the time by playing Yu-Gi-Oh! or something. However, Ted suggested that we should browse the deep web. Isn't that dangerous? I asked. Yeah, Ted, we've heard stories about people going on there, then having their info leaked and strangers stalking their homes. Our brother informed us that as long as we didn't commit the classic amateur deep web browsing mistakes, we'd be fine. Said mistakes were like not using VPN and not unplugging our webcam, or at least covering it up if we happened to be using a laptop, which we were. And after making sure that the laptop's built-in mic and webcam were covered in duct tape, we went on the deep web. For the most part, it wasn't really as exciting as we were expecting. The best thing we came across was a space shooter in which we played as a giant penis shooting sperm at spaceships. Next, we found a live stream that had a man dancing in his underwear while rubbing cream cheese on his chest, and then he had clothespins attached to his nipples. Not that I want to see anyone get killed or anything like that, but is there anything actually interesting to do on here? I ask. We can check out some more things in a bit. Right now, I'm hungry though. Yeah, me too. As bizarre as it to say, I think watching this guy made me hungry for cheese. Do you guys have any food in the kitchen? No, but... Mom left us some money if we wanted to order something, Harry said. I was about to propose ordering pizza 
when by coincidence, an ad for pizza popped up on the screen. It read, Deep Web's Deep Dish Pizza. Huh, I kinda like the name. Should we click on it? Or do you think it may be a virus? Harry asked Ted. It might be. Do you want to risk it? Eh, what the hell. This is an old laptop anyway, I said. Ted clicked on the banner, which opened up a menu. And on that menu were some of the most mouth-watering pizzas we've ever seen. Not only pizza, but also pasta, breadsticks, mozzarella sticks, and desserts among other things. Hell, even the salad looked presentable from a pizza place. And above the picture was the button that said, Order Here. We talked about what we wanted for a few minutes, and eventually, we decided on a meat lover's pizza with olives, mushrooms, and stuffed crust, mozzarella sticks, apple pie pizza, and two big bottles of Dr. Pepper. And just as a precaution, we decided to pay in cash and make sure to put the address in as somewhere public that was just close by. When we arrived at our location, which was at the library down the street, we saw the delivery guy who had our order waiting by the front desk. He was a regular looking dude, and he looked to be in his early 30s. What was odd was that he wasn't wearing a uniform or anything. He just had regular clothes on, and we paid for our food, and then we went outside to eat in Ted's car. It was freaking delicious. The meat was cooked just right, and the cheese was super stringy. We were busy trying some of the apple pie pizza and mozzarella sticks when we heard someone tap the driver's window. We looked outside to see the delivery guy holding up a bottle of Dr. Pepper. The food was so good, we didn't even notice we were missing one. He motioned for Ted to put down his window, and Ted did so. Then the man apologized for forgetting and handed Ted the Dr. Pepper. By the way, how's the pizza? The man asked. This stuff kicks ass. We'll have to order from you guys more often, Ted replied. Glad you liked it, but to make up for my foolish mistake earlier, how about I give you guys something extra? Oh, you don't have to do that. The man insisted, and eventually we caved. He ran to his car and came back with a small box, and he told us it was filled with cookies. Then he handed it to Ted. Well, that was nice of him, I said as the man walked away. Let me get a couple of those cookies. You got it, Ted replied, opening the box. However, instead of cookies, what we saw inside looked to be some kind of smoke grenade, and it went off, sending fumes throughout the car. The fumes must have been some kind of knockout gas because we began to feel really dizzy, and the last thing I saw before passing out was the man smiling at me through the window, and unfortunately, there wasn't anyone else outside. When we woke up, we found ourselves in a musty, smelly room with a single floor lamp beaming down on us like a spotlight, but very dimly lit. We figured we must be in a basement and all three of us were tied up with rope in the middle of the floor. From out of the shadows appeared the man. The dim light of the lamp was the only thing illuminating his face. Look who's finally awake, he exclaimed. You crazy mother effer, let us go, Ted demanded. Let you go? I can't do that. I like to share something with customers who appreciate my cooking. Wait, you made those pizzas? I asked. Yes, I did. I run this business all by myself. And what exactly are you going to share with us? Harry asked hesitantly. They say, you are what you eat, so 
I'll make you guys into pizza, he said, flipping a switch to turn on the overhead light. Now, you may be thinking, if he had a regular light, why did he even bother with that stupid lamp? And to be honest, I don't know. The man was odd, to say the least, and the only thing I can think of is that he did it for dramatic effect. Well, anyway, when he turned on the light, it revealed at least a dozen naked corpses hanging on hooks along the walls, and they each had parts missing. One girl had her head missing, and the man laughed when he saw our horrified expressions. You sick person! Harry cried out. Never heard that one before. Oh, and just so you know, this is where the meat from my meat lover's pizza come from. Wait, so you mean we've been eating... <laughs> That's right, you've been eating people meat. And all three of us started gagging. Oh, come on, don't throw up. I have enough cleaning to do as it is, the man said. And I'm guessing you're going to kill us, then make us into toppings? I ask. <laughs> hey, you catch on quick. Now, I'll give you a couple of minutes to decide who'll be first. The man said, sharpening a knife with his back turned. I looked over to see what my brothers were doing. It turned out, Harry and Ted had found two shards of glass that the man must have forgotten to pick up and they were trying to cut away the ropes with it. They both gave me a look, so I knew that I had to be the one to distract him. The man turned, sporting a wide toothy smile and holding a large carving knife. Then he began walking towards us. Luckily, he couldn't see what my brothers were doing from where he was. Wait, I said, sitting up. Uh, what is it? he asked, with a hint of annoyance in his voice. I was just wondering how one gets to be a cannibalistic pizza maker. Are you stalling? No, I just figured someone with such an interesting occupation must have had an interesting background. Well, it's not like anyone will be able to find us out here. I suppose I can summarize to you guys what my life has been like. And we all made sure to look at him and pretend to seem interested. See, I grew up the middle child of four brothers and five sisters. Everyone in my family had a natural cooking ability. That is except for me. No matter how hard I try, I couldn't get the hang of it. Something my family chastised me greatly for. So, when I was 16, I did the only rational thing I could think of. I drugged my entire family, cut off parts of their flesh, then baked my first pizza using the meat. And let me tell you, it was a damn good pizza. I even made my family eat it, but uh, they threw it up. I could tell they liked the taste of it though, and so did you guys. Did you kill your family? Hmm? Oh, of course. And I burned all the evidence. After that, I drifted for a while setting up my business in different places before I came here. I admit, running things was difficult. It wasn't easy getting victims. That is until I stumbled across this deep web stuff. I must say it's very convenient and a great way for me to run things. Now, have you decided who'll be first yet? Because if not, I'll decide for you. Actually, we have, I said, feeling two sharp objects poke my palm. Who will it be then? Shards. The man gave me a confused look. That quickly turned to surprise when Harry and Ted sat up. As I laid on my side, before the man could react, they threw the shards of glass at him. One went right into his throat, and the other in his face, cutting a gash right next to his eye. 
He staggered back, gasping, as his temple and neck bled, and my brothers quickly pulled off the rest of their ropes. Then Ted charged the man while Harry untied my rope, and once I was free, we joined Ted in kicking the shit out of that dude. It turned into a good old-fashioned brotherly ass whooping. I mean, we went to town on this guy. We kicked him in the ribs for a few minutes, then we took turns stomping on his crotch. We even did that thing where Harry got him up and held him between his arms behind his back, and Ted and I took turns gut-punching him over and over until he went limp to the floor gasping for air. And as much fun as it was beating the crap of that asshole, Harry eventually went upstairs and found a phone in the house and call the police. When they arrived, you could tell some of them were freaked out by how crazy the scene looked like. A couple detectives took our statements, while some uniformed officers wearing latex gloves started bagging evidence. Two more officers arrested the man, noting that he was lucky that one shard of glass didn't go any deeper into his neck. And after the detectives got all the information they needed from us, another officer then gave us a ride back to the library. You know, throughout the questioning, there was one thing we all three forgot to mention. That we still had some of the pizza left over in Ted's car. And, I know, we should have turned it into the police. But as crazy as that guy was... He was right about one thing. That pizza was damn good. And my brothers and I figured, why let good food go to waste? And here are the top comments for my last video. And here's the riddle for this video.